April 16, 2007, Colin Goddard survived one of the deadliest shootings, school shootings in history at Virginia Tech. The gunman who suffered from mental illness killed 32 students and teachers, severely injured 17 more in just 11 minutes. The guns he used were purchased legally online and in a brilliant new documentary, Living for 32 profiles Colin's efforts to change the laws on buying guns. And Colin, now Assistant Director of Legislative Affairs at the Brady Campaign, is with us. And it is a delight, a real delight, Thank to you. spend some time with you, Colin. You were shot four times. Yeah, that's correct. And you were French class. Right. No, it was a normal 9 a.m. French class. Um, we heard kind of some banging noises coming outside of our room, but we didn't think it was any alarm because we had heard construction noises going on the whole semester. Mm -hmm. And then it's with, once they got a lot closer and a lot louder, we realized that maybe this isn't construction. And um, teacher went to look into the hallway to see what was going on. Immediately she shut the door again and instructed all of us to get underneath our desks and for somebody in the class to call 911. And for the first time ever in my life, I called 911 for a real emergency, and I was trying to explain that, you know, I think there's someone here that's shooting. I really didn't know what was going on, and by the time I got out where we were and, you know, which building and which floor, we had bullets coming through our door, and the next 10 minutes was the craziest 10 minutes experience of my whole life. And there were 17 of you in the class? There were 17 in my, in my French class, yes, and I'm one of six, I believe, who are still alive. I know what this... I'm just, I'm sorry, I mean, that you had to go through this, that anybody had to experience something like this, and you said it wasn't just that, it was other things that you saw after that led you to where you are right now? Right, I mean, it took me a while to get here, I mean, as it takes a lot of people yeah. different amounts of time to, to get over and move on with their lives with something crazy that happens like this, so it was, it was, it was watching another shooting unfold on the news that really struck me and, and, and mm -hmm. it motivated me to get involved. I couldn't sit on the sides anymore. I had to do something about this. I couldn't let this just happen to another family and, and, and go through the same thing I went through. I had to do something. And tell us what you're doing now. So now um, I'm an effort to try to um, enforce some of the laws that are already on the books. The laws that say those who have felony records, those who are dangerously mentally ill, and a few other prohibitive factors shouldn't be allowed to buy guns. And when I learned that, that Cho bought the guns the way he did legally through um, through the fact that something simple as his court file was never given to the background check system. You know, if that record was there, he would have been denied from the guns that he bought. And I was like, something as simple as that, you know, hadn't been mm -hmm. done. So, you know, we tried to improve the number of records in the system, but we also try to improve how, f how broadly applied that background check system is. Right now in America, if you're a dealer, you have to run a background check on anyone who buys from you. But if you, have a, if you are a private seller selling from your personal collection, you are not required to run a background check. So you can literally go into these places where, where private sellers um, congregate, which is quite often gun shows on weekends, and walk up to these guys, pay them cash money, get your gun, and walk out with oh. no questions asked. No ID shown, no paperwork filled out, or, and more importantly, no background check run. And I know that you went undercover yeah. to, to expose this, and you're part of the profile in this new documentary. Mm -hmm. So I want to play a clip now. All right. Let's see. All of my guns, I've never had any paperwork, cash or carry, that's it. Mm -hmm. You're allowed to sell your own collection. That's right, that's right. Now, this quote, gun show, loophole, I've never seen anybody walking around selling guns. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. How much are you selling that for? Four. Four? Yeah. You want to look at it? Yeah, please. Steel. It comes as is like this? I'm sorry? Comes as is like this? Yes. Nothing else? Nothing else. Yes, sir. I think you got yourself a deal. Oh, boy, to see it so easily done like that. And we were talking in the, in the commercial break and saying there are, there are groups on both sides. There are mm -hmm. groups that say, I have the right to bear arms. I don't need this. How do we coexist? Because you're not anti-gun. No. No, I've shot guns many, many times before. I've been hunting, been to the range. You know, we're simply trying to hold everyone to the same standard. The dealers have to run these checks. The private sellers don't. They're selling the same guns in the same place to the same people. They should have the same requirements. And this, if you are a law-abiding citizen with no, with no any sort of record, you will pass that background check every time. And you will walk away with your gun. Well put. I'm so glad that you're doing well and you're doing the work you. that you are doing, Colin. Thank you. Thank you so very, very much. So important. And you can learn more about Colin's efforts and get details on the screenings of the documentary. It's called Living for 32. Living for 32. Go to abcnews.com slash GMA and find out more about that.